I just realized that I need to feed the fish. Give me one minute, I'll be right back. For the longest time, I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to run some macroalgae in my system. On one hand, I wasn't really in a hurry because I didn't need it for nitrate and phosphate removal. I kind of more wanted it for CO2 removal, which is great for increasing the pH. My tank, especially the 120, tends to run a low pH, especially at night. The reason I've been taking so long just to put some kind of macroalgae or fuge in my system is because of the, all the choices out there, I don't think many of them are great. Let's look at them separately. So the first one is you can just throw your Kato in a sump and then you can just have a light on top of it and voila. That works great by the way, but there's just so much mess that happens over time. The light spread is just all over the place. You get algae growing in your skimmer and other compartments. So you put snails in there to, to help combat that algae problem. But now you have snail poop. Your, your sub just becomes a mess. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. It's awesome in the sense that you get all that flow going through the sump is going straight through your Kato. But I just am really OCD about having a clean sump. So that's really not my thing. The other option is to buy one of those nice sumps where you have a separate refugium compartment. That's better, don't get me wrong, but you're still going to have some light spread into other compartments. Not much because they usually have, you know, like white baffles or whatever. But the problem with my specific case is that, like I said, I want to run my fuge at night. There's not like a solid piece of wood on top of the stand. So any light down there, my fish will see it and they'll get stressed out. So that isn't my solution either. Not to mention the fact that those sumps are nice, but they're really expensive. So the other option is to buy a Kato Morpha or macroalgae reactor. I like the idea of those, but they do tend to be a little pricey. The smaller ones, you know, they're reasonable. They're maybe like 400 bucks, but they're just not really my style. The bigger one that I really want is about 800 bucks and I'm really not about to spend that. And the same thing goes for LG turf scrubbers. Those things are just too expensive, man. I mean, you know, like 500 bucks or something like maybe even lower or higher depending on what, you know how big you want your LG turf scrubber to be. But the other thing too is that they just seem to be a little bit more maintenance. Like, you know, you have to pull off the screen, you know, which isn't difficult. But, you know, then you take the screen over to the sink and then you toothbrush it off or you scrape it off with a credit card under tap water. That's, that's kind of not the solution for me either. Don't scrape off too much because, you know, it, it would take longer to grow back. It would be great to just have a nice fuge just reach your hand in there, rip off a section of the Kato, throw it in the trash, and then you're done with it. That ideally is the is the perfect maintenance. My original plan was to just have a bucket fuge, you know, have a five gallon bucket plumbed right next to my sump or next to my tank. You know, I have a little feed pump going into the bucket and then over overflows via gravity back into the sump. The problems with that setup is that it would be ghetto as hell <laughs> in my opinion, to have a bucket next to my tank. Um, you know, my tank is in my living room. It's a whole nother story if, you know, I had my tank in the garage or something. Plus that extra, you know, tank, extra set of plumbing adds another degree of complexity to my system. More components equals more potential points of failure. So thinking, thinking, thinking over year. until one day it just hit me. Oh yeah, that's what I'll do. Why don't you just stick that bucket in your sump? And that's it.
So removing the sump was really the biggest part of this whole process. I had to modify the sump a little bit because I had to remove a baffle and I couldn't just stick that bucket into that sump because there just wasn't enough clearance between the stand and the sump. <laughs> Once I got that taken care of, it was easy peasy. Making the actual refugium, bucket refugium, was very simple. Let me just show you how I did it. Basically, I used uniseals to tap in through the bucket. Uniseals are great for when you have to plumb something through something that's not flat. These are only a couple bucks and they're awesome. I have a half inch PVC plumbing in the input and my output is one inch. So my input looks like this. It might be a little difficult to see in the tank. So I'm showing it to you here. But this is what my input essentially looks like. I have a hose barb here and the pump is feeding water through this end and it's shooting water down towards the bottom of the bucket. And the um, output is pretty much the same thing except I have the elbows pointing in opposite directions because one of these is like the overflow. So if this was the inside of the bucket here, the water's overflowing into this elbow and it's coming down here back into the sump. Pretty simple, right? Pretty awesome. This overflow elbow is threaded. I did leave it threaded because eventually, probably very soon, I'm going to have to put a couple snails in there because there's algae growing all over the place. I put a threaded elbow here on the output so I could stick on one of these strainers so the snails don't get in there and, um, you know, clog up the overflow. It does create some bubbles. They're very coarse bubbles, so you know it's not going to cause you to have like a micro bubble problem in the tank. Um, you know the bubbles are big, so they just pop easily. It this doesn't create much noise either. As far as the the lid goes, I actually bought a Kessel H160. It works perfect because it's small. It's just you know like a point source light, and I could just drill a hole on top of the bucket, and just the Kessel literally just sits on top of the lid. <laughs> The Fuge has been going on in my tank for probably about six weeks now. Definitely seeing some changes in pH. Before my, at night, my pH used to swing from about 8 to about 8.4. And that was with dosing a lot of Kalkwasser late night, early morning to keep it from dipping below 8. The swing is not 0.4 anymore. The pH only swings from like 0.15 to like 0.2. It varies a little bit and I'm definitely like I said using a lot less calc water, so that's freaking awesome that's what I wanted as far as nitrates and phosphate goes like like I said I never really had a problem with those they've always were undetectable but I do run Roafoss and I'm still running Roafoss at this moment but there's definitely some changes that I've seen in the corals they are definitely on the lighter side let me just show you what I'm talking about <laughs> Definitely on the lighter side. I actually like it. It reminds me of, you know, 10 years ago when Zeovit tanks were really the <laughs> they They had that nice pastel look. I, I do welcome it. I know it's not everybody's thing. They don't really like the pastel stuff, but I do. I think it's cool, at least for now. Maybe later on I'll remove the GFO or Rolfoss. I thought it was going to be <laughs> having a bucket in my sump. I thought it was going to look bad, but... And for that reason, I actually bought, you know, brand spanking new buckets from Home Depot, which only cost me about seven bucks with the lid. But it actually doesn't look bad. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty sleek. Even one guy came over and he was like, yeah, that looks nice. And I was like, cool, I'll take that. 
<laughs> it's just a bucket in a sump, but I'll take that. Uh, but now people even said that this idea was genius, which I'm like, okay, all right, I'll take that too. That's pretty much it, guys. I wanted to share with you that because it's inexpensive, it's space saving, it's so easy to build, it's safe, and you can definitely work it to where you don't have any light spillover anywhere. So it's definitely keep your system or your sump clean. It's just really easy to maintain. Yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.